For those of you who don't know me, my name is Teal and I'm the co-founder of Relax Into Love, which is a community that I've built to really help ambitious boss babe women of today's generation to really learn how to embody that beautiful feminine energy and radiate self-confidence and self-love so that they're able to really attract love with ease. And I wanted to actually make a video to tell you a little bit about my personal journey in getting to where I am now, where I am literally traveling the world with the love of my life, engaged and running this incredible business out of my laptop. Um, because I, I recognize that <clears throat> a lot of times when we are stuck somewhere, it's easy to get into the comparison game. And it's easy to see other people's lives and go, oh gosh, I wish I could just be her, or gosh, she has it so easy. Why, you know, why can't I get X, Y, and Z? And I just want to let you know, babe, that no matter where you are right now, I have also gone through my fair share of struggles, and I want you to know that it is possible. It is possible to shift wherever you are and get to wherever you want to be. So I'm going to kind of do a couple different videos sharing some of the personal struggles that I've gone through in my own journey to let you know that like this is all just part of life, right? This is the journey of life that we're on and um, yeah, it can be tough. It can be tough and I just want to, I want to recognize first, I want to share a little bit about the first struggle that I had back in the day and it was around really feeling extreme immense pain when it came, came to relationships like I wish I could say that my life has just been a dreamy amazing love fest <laughs> from the day I was born and for in many ways it was I have an amazing family I've always had such an amazing supportive group of friends but when it came to my love life for yeah about the first eight to ten years of my dating life from the time I was you know 13 14 just starting to look at guys until I was in my mid-twenties I really really struggled with connecting to men and it was something that I I could never really understand and I could never really figure it out I knew that I wanted that deep love and I had a lot of pressure from my parents whether they gave the pressure on purpose or not I felt a lot of pressure on myself to have a boyfriend and to be in that relationship st status that we all crave and that we all want. My parents met when they were 16 and 18 <laughs> and they dated for seven years and then been married ever since. So from a young age I've had this amazing role model of like what I really wanted for my life. And going into my 20s I had still never had a boyfriend. It was just like I couldn't figure out how to actually connect to men in a way where they would really be able to see me and want to actually step into a relationship with me. And I, I did everything, right? Like my, my boss babe, <laughs> masculine energy, go-getter kind of attitude would do everything that I could to try and get guys to like me. I was on every single dating app that you could ever imagine. I was in every club and social activity that you could find. I was such a social person and I purposely pushed myself even outside of my own comfort zones to try and meet up with guys um, to see what would be possible. But what I found myself was just getting into this like hook and fizzle over and over and over again. Like it was like clockwork. It usually was every three months or so. I would hook a guy in, they think I'm this cool, awesome, badass chick, which I was. But then a few months into dating me, they're just like, yeah, there's something missing. And they would just break up with me for no reason and it would fizzle out. And every single time it left me devastated, just devastated. Cause I just, I was like, what is going on? Like, what is wrong with me? And they could never tell me, they could never tell me what was wrong with me. They just knew that I wasn't the one for them. And this was really, really painful for me. And it made me start to think of, oh my gosh, like what else can I do, <laughs> right? What else can I actually do to get these guys to take interest in me? Or I would start settling, you know, and I'd start settling for guys that I knew I wasn't really attracted to, or I knew weren't really that high caliber quality man, but I just was lonely and I just wanted someone, right? Have any of you ladies been in this circumstance before? I'm sure you have. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty common thing. Um, and I just want you to know that you're not alone if you're feeling this way. This was something I struggled with for eight years. And 
after a while, it was just, it was something that I was just like, I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong, right? Um, and before I, you know, went on this big personal self-discovery track to figure out what was going wrong, something went right. And I did actually meet a guy. I met a guy in college and it was everything you could have imagined. It was so like beautiful fairy tale, like kind of love, right? He would, he would pick me up, you know, after class and we would go mountain biking along the beach and we'd go surfing at sunset and we'd have picnics in the park. And like, it was just so adorably cute. Um, but we were young, we were young. We were like mid twenties, still in college. And I mean, I remember I would be studying for finals and he would even come up to my, like to the bottom of my uh, house and he'd throw rocks at my window and like try and pull me away from studying. Like it was just so incredibly cute, but about a few months into dating, <laughs> here we go again. It was like a curse. It was literally like a curse. A few months into dating, he was gonna go and study abroad and I was gonna go study abroad. He was going all the way to Asia and I was going to Costa Rica. And so it was just, we were separated and we knew we had this impending due date that was coming. And even though we were really trying not to fall in love, it was getting harder and harder and harder to admit the fact that we had really, really deep feelings for each other. And we went and studied abroad. And at that point, I kept hoping, I kept hoping that when I got back that we could pick things up and continue and start our life together. We'd been talking about our future together. And after that study abroad trip, the summer came and I got an email from him saying that he wasn't coming back and that he was transferring schools and starting a whole new life across the country. And that absolutely devastated me. It absolutely devastated me. And it took me a really, really long time to get over that. And as a consequence of that, I really felt that my heart was blocked and guarded. And it made me completely close up inside. Like I just, I couldn't even imagine another guy coming into my life, like the way that he had really impacted my life. And I had given my heart so fully because it was the first time that I'd really had a taste of what love could be. <clears throat> I'm getting all choked up. <sighs> but I, I knew I had to move on. Um, it took me three years, three years to get over him. And I think that also contributed to some of the, the dating struggles, you know, after that, because I just felt like there was just this wall. Like I just put up this wall and no one was going to be able to touch my heart again like that because I never wanted to feel that way ever again. I mean, I was in bed for days just crying and hearing his name or anyone named that same name would just make me just completely shut down for years. So that has been kind of the, the start and the catalyst of my personal development and relationship training journal, or journey um, and has really, really propelled me forward into knowing that I needed to do something differently because I couldn't keep having the hook and fizzle. I couldn't keep swiping on dating apps and meeting guys that were just not good for me. I couldn't keep just like blocking my heart and pretending that everything was gonna be okay when it wasn't. And that's when I decided that I really needed to get help. But the problem was is that I was really embarrassed to admit that I needed help. And that's what I wanna talk about in my next video because I think there's this big stigma around asking for help, especially when it comes to love and relationships. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. And in my next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what it really means to ask for help and why relationship coaching can really, really help transform 180 your relationship from now and for the future and forever.